So in today's video, I'm going to be previewing Accrington Stanley versus Bradford City. And then the second part of today's video, I'm going to bring you guys my Game Week 35 League 2 score predictions. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and 80 likes on today's video, that'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We are now on the road to 9,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so. And it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well that down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match. What would your stand 11 be as well? Would you make any changes from Tuesday night's draw against Doncaster Rovers? Obviously, Accrington recently changing managers. John Coleman has been there for what feels like absolutely forever. I think he's been there for like 25 years in total, minus like a, a two-year gap he had, which is absolutely crazy. But they've decided to change managers. They're currently just below us in the table. At the moment, we're seven points off the playoffs with one game in hand. Not winning on Tuesday was very disappointing. I feel like that was a real good opportunity for us to climb up the table and close that gap. Unfortunately, we, for the large part, failed to do so. But make sure to drop a like on there for me. Subscribe if you're new as well. And let's get into it. Starting out then with the current Skybet League 2 table. My team, Bradford City, we currently sit 15th in the table. After 34 matches, we've got 12 wins, 11 draws and 11 defeats. Scoring 42 goals and also conceding 40, which leaves us on a positive 2 goal difference and 47 points. Our last couple of matches then have been a draw, a win, a win, a win and a draw. So undefeated in our last five league games. Them last couple of matches then being a one-all draw at home to Doncaster Rovers. A 1-0 defeat at home to Wickham Wanderers in the Football League Trophy semi-final. A 1-0 win at home to Sutton United. A 4-0 win at home to MK Dons. A 1-0 win away at Wrexham AFC and a 0-0 draw at home to AFC Wimbledon. If we compare that then to Accrington Stanley they sit one place below us as I mentioned earlier in 16th in the table. After 35 matches they've got 13 wins wins, only 7 draws and 15 defeats, scoring 47 goals and also conceding 48, which leaves them on a minus 1 goal difference and 46 points. Their last couple of matches then have been a loss, a loss, a loss, a draw and a win, so just 1 point picked up out of their last possible 12. Their last couple of matches then being a 4-0 defeat away at Wrexham AFC, Lewis Shipley getting sent off in that game, so he's going to be banned for this one against us. They also had a 2-1 defeat away at Walsall, a 1-0 defeat at home to Crawley Town, a 1-0 draw away at Colchester United again picking up another red card in that one. Brad Hills was sent off in that one, but three games has gone by, so he'll definitely be back available for this one. And they also had a 2 0 win at home to AFC Wimbledon. So their form recently hasn't been great, but they've been playing against some decent sides. Wrexham are up there, Walsall in the form of their life, and Crawley have been pretty decent for the large part this season. So it is going to be a tough game. We have already played them twice earlier on this season, winning 1 0 in the reverse league fixture and drawing one all earlier on, right at the start of the campaign in the EFL Cup, I think it was where we drew one all and ended up beating them on penalties. I think we beat them 4-1 on penalties, which is not really a scoreline you see all too often when it comes to a penalty shootout. But now we're going to get into the team that I would go with if I was Graham Alexander. Now, some big news coming out of the media this week that Daniel Yagurke has returned to Bradford City and Jamie Walker has been back in full training for the full week. Obviously, Walker hasn't played since before Christmas. Oyagoke hasn't played since Alexander's first match where he got subbed on and then 10 minutes later was subbed off after suffering quite a serious shoulder injury. So it's great to have them two at both back and also Richie Smallwood back available from suspension after the performance on Tuesday night. I have made a couple of changes to my team and in terms of my formation, I have gone with the 3-4-3. I don't think Walker will be fit enough to start this game. I might have him on the bench. We'll have to wait and see, but I've gone with the 3-4-3. In goal, I've gone with Sam Walker. I feel like on Tuesday night, he had a pretty positive impact on the game. Could he do better for their goal? I don't think so, personally. I do think it is a good finish from Luke Molyneux. He made a couple of really decent saves in the game. The one I remember the most is in the second half, they had a half volley attempt on the edge of the box. It looked like it was flying in the top corner, and Walker does just about enough to tip it over the bar. His distribution on Tuesday was quite disappointing. He was trying to smash everything up the field first time, and a lot of things weren't quite reaching Cook. Everything seemed to be falling a little bit short in the, both the first half and the second half, so you can't really blame the wind or anything like that. I do think his distribution was quite poor but his ability to come for crosses and free kicks was there he did that on a number of occasions and for me personally deserves to start in between the sticks was unlucky really not to keep a clean sheet and definitely deserves to start in my opinion into my back three then on the right side I've gone with Jonathan Tompkinson I can't really tell you anything he did of note in the match which kind of means that he was fairly average but on the whole his Bradford City career has been pretty positive and he has been a good centre half for us so far so I definitely stick with him in my back three in the middle I've gone with Sam Stubbs obviously Matty Platt 
not available at this moment in time. He might be back for next Saturday's game against Mansfield, fingers crossed, but because Stubbs on Tuesday, he had some good moments, but then he also had some bad moments. I don't think it was his finest work, if I'm honest with you. I thought Ironside played on him and did it quite well. Obviously, Stubbs loses the original header for their goal, and normally Stubbs is quite good coming up against the physical strikers, but I do feel like he struggled a little bit on Tuesday night against Joe Ironside, but again, he's much better than Ash Taylor, so definitely deserves to start over him. And at left centre-back, I've gone with it, Kieran Kelly. Again, very similar to, to Tomkinson. Didn't really notice him do much in the game, which kind of means he was fairly average. The one thing I would say that a lot of long balls that Doncaster were putting forward towards his side, he kept heading out for throw-ins, and it was quite frustrating at the time, and obviously, you know, if in doubt, you know, clear it out the stadium, but sometimes I feel like he could have that little bit extra composure and try and play it into midfield, but again, we were missing Smallwood in there. Gilead wasn't in central midfield. You know, when you've got two completely different midfielders in McDonald and a daughter, what you're normally used to, maybe the defence didn't quite have the comfortability in playing, you know, trying to play through the thirds and all that sort of stuff. But Kelly, on the whole, has been very good under Alexander, so I'd definitely stick with him in my back three. Into my midfield four then, at right wing back, I've gone with Brad Halliday. Now, again, on Tuesday, I thought he had a pretty positive performance. I think for Brad Halliday's standards, it was fairly average, but I still feel like overall, he did have a good impact on the game. He was bombing up and down that right side, as he does. Didn't really have much defending to do going forward. I feel like he could have maybe had a little bit better end product. There were some times where he were trying to overplay it, you know, when we were building up down our right-hand side, but again, he's playing with Tariq Wright, who he's not played much football with this season, so their relationship isn't quite there. Tomkinson was trying to overlap at times, and they were all just kind of getting in each other's ways, but Halliday, on the whole, has been excellent for us so far this season, so definitely deserves to start at right wing-back. Into my two central midfielders, and at first, I've gone with the captain, Richie Smallwood. We missed him massively on Tuesday. He's finally served that two-game ban, and hopefully he doesn't pick up another five yellow cards in his next two games or whatever it is until the yellow cards do reset but obviously we did miss him massively on Tuesday someone in that midfield who's willing to put a tackle in you're never going to get that from Clark or Dort and despite McDonald's size he's not really the most physical of midfielders I do think we missed Smallwood's leadership in there and for me personally, I do think Smallwood is massively overhated by a large portion of our fan base. Yes, his set pieces aren't particularly great, but his overall general play, for the large part, is very good, and we need him in that midfield. If he's fit and available, he has to start for me. And partnering him, I've gone with Alex Gilead. I don't think McDonald did enough on Tuesday to keep himself in the side. And again, you factor in his fitness and all that sort of stuff. I do feel like this is a game which will suit Gilead's energy or the, over McDonald's passing ability. So that is why I've gone with him in midfield. I don't think he was too bad to be fair at left wing back was unlucky maybe to not get an assist or two in the first half where he was driving at Luke Molyneux got past him far too easy got the ball in and Tariq Wright is eight ten yards out something like that and fires it completely wide he completely got that shot wrong but it was great play from Gilead and again deserves to start in this team and at left wing back I've gone with it Lewis Richards we need to play players in their natural positions not trying to shoehorn Gilead in at wing back I'd rather have him in, him, him in the middle and have Richards at left wing back who is a very very good player at this level maybe we're trying to build him back up because he has recently returned from another injury and without playing for two weeks you never really know on our pitch he could have maybe sustained another injury but Richards for the large part has been very good for us so far and I thought again looked pretty positive when he came on off the bench was you know getting at Doncaster there was an occasion right near the end of the game where he was trying to take his man on and do a few step overs and he just stood on the ball which obviously wasn't great but again that is all to do with match sharpness and all that sort of stuff I'm pretty sure we hadn't signed Lewis Richards by the point of when we played them in the EFL Cup at the start of the campaign so it'll be nice to see how he does get on in this one moving on then into my front three now this has been one of the hardest picks I've had to make all season if I'm honest with you because we've had returning plays it's not just a case of who maybe makes the bench it's you've got to have some players not even in the squad because we've got so many good players in these attacking positions I mentioned it in the six things we learned video we did post match against Doncaster that these sort of players in these positions have to be performing consistently or one week they could be in the starting 11 and then the next game they could be not even in the squad because we have so many players in there you think Adore has been excellent in that right wing role Tyler Smith scored on Tuesday Andy Cook the top goal scorer Tyreek Wright didn't really impress neither did Callum Cavan but again, Kavanagh's form before that has been very good. Right, last season, very good for us. Chapman came on off the bench and got the assist. Bobby Poynton has been excellent for the large part this season. Adam Wilson had a really good impact on off the bench as well. So there's a lot of food for thought. And in terms of my front three, then, as the right winger, I have gone with Clark Adar. I want to see him back in his best position. Throughout February, he was absolutely excellent at playing there. And he needs to stay there, in my opinion, I feel like. Tyreek Wright was terrible on Tuesday night. Didn't really offer much, if I'm honest with you, defensively. I thought he's 
his work rate, work rate sorry, was quite poor. And Adore has been very good playing in that role. I don't really know why we put him in central midfield. It seemed like just for the sake of it, just to try and get Tariq Wright in the side. Didn't really make sense to me, but I'd like to see him get another start as the right winger. As a striker, I've gone with Andy Cook. I feel like on Tuesday night, he was getting a little bit frustrated because, like I mentioned about Sam Walker, his distribution wasn't quite getting far enough up the pitch. On the few occasions that it did, I thought... Sometimes he was mistiming the headers, but then when he had the opportunity to, he was bringing it down on his chest and linking up play nicely with other players. But I thought Richard Wood, for the large part, did deal with Andy Cook quite well. He had a couple of half chances, one in the first half where he's driving forward on his own and doesn't really have much support. Takes the shot on early to try and keep uh, catch the keeper off guard, and unfortunately, it is a good save from their keeper. Has a header as well quite late on in the game, which the keeper managed to save. But on the whole, Andy Cook is still our most natural finisher. He's still our best goal scorer, so that is why I've gone with him as the striker. And as the left winger, again, this was the hardest position to pick. Me, personally, I like to have a right footer on the left side and a left footer on the right side, so Adam Wilson doesn't make my team despite being absolutely excellent on Tuesday, and I do think he is really unlucky to miss out on this team. As the left winger, I have gone with Harry Chapman. I feel like when you look at all the different options we've got, yes, you could play Tyler Smith there, but then if you need a goal on off the bench... You're not really looking at any strikers on there unless you're going to go Derbyshire. And I feel like we've got much better players to not have Derbyshire on the bench for. Obviously, it's massive missing Jake Young for the large part of the remainder of this season, which is massively disappointing. But Chapman, I feel like, did have a positive impact on off the bench on Tuesday. He's one of them players, Chapman, where between now and the end of the season, he needs to go on a good run of form if he wants a new deal. Because from what we've seen of him so far in a Bradford City shirt, there's just not enough end product there. He showed it on Tuesday with a great ball into the box and an excellent finish from Tyler Smith. There's no taking that away from Smith but I feel like Chapman and Smith didn't really do much else in the game so I'd like to see Chapman get another start and see what he can do and his last start I think against Wrexham he was really really poor but I'd start him as the left winger in this one and on the bench then for me I have gone with Colin Doyle Daniel Yagoke, Kevin McDonald Jamie Walker Bobby Poynton Adam Wilson and Tyler Smith the players currently unavailable are Matty Platt Alex Patterson and Jake Young so the players you miss out then through selection will be Ash Taylor Liam Rydow Tyreek Wright Callum Kavanagh and Matt Darvish with some big names there not even on the bench but again I mentioned it earlier you have to be performing and Wright and Kavanagh simply did not do that on Tuesday so they don't make my match day squad for this one now then we're going to get into my game week 35 league two score predictions starting out then with Accrington Stanley versus Bradford City again I've mentioned it before every time I predict us to win we never do Tuesday's performance was pretty underwhelming not a lot to really get behind Accrington are on a terrible run of form they've just changed their manager this is all set up for a 2-1 Accrington Stanley win Barrow AFC versus Colchester United and back in the Bluebirds a 4 2 0 win. Doncaster Rovers versus Crew Alexandra, I think, finishes in a 3 1 win for the Railway Men. Is that right? I'm pretty sure that's right. Forest Green Rovers versus Walsall FC and back in the Saddlers a 4 2 1 win. Gillingham FC versus Tramia Rovers and back in the home side a 4 2 1 win. Harrogate Town versus Crawley Town and back in the away side a 4 2 1 win. MK Dons versus Salford City, I think, finishes in a 3 2 at home win. Mansfield Town versus Swindon Town and back in the Stags at 4 2 0 win. Morecambe FC versus Wrexham AFC, I'm going with a one-all draw. Notts County versus AFC Wimbledon I think finishes in a 3-2 at home win. I think it'll be quite high scoring in that one. Stockport County versus Newport County, I think it'll be a frustrating game for the home side. And I'm actually, actually going to back the away side for a 1-0 win. And finally, Sutton United versus Grimsby Town, a big relegation six-pointer. I'm going 0-0 in that one. I think it will be quite underwhelming and frustrating. But I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on their form if you could channel 80 likes as I said at the start of today's video that would be massively appreciated subscribe if you're new as well we are on the road to 9,000 subscribers so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on it's free to do so and it does massively help out get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below let me know down below your score prediction for this match and what would your stat 11 be as well do you agree with the team that I have proposed thank you all for watching have a great rest of your day and I'll see you all tomorrow for probably a live stream starting around 245, 250, something like that. Peace.